A potentially disastrous situation seems to have been prevented. A missile landed in a farm near the Poland-Ukraine border and killed two people. The village of Shevadov, where the incident occurred, is situated just some 5 miles or 8 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. Initial reports suggested that the missile was launched by Russia, and hence there were increasing concerns that the ongoing conflict could spill beyond Ukraine. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how a potential World War III has been averted as a Russian-made missile landed in Poland. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Get an exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com defense or clicking the link in the description. Use the code DEFENSE at the checkout to get an extra month free for the two-year plan. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The picture has now changed, and there's growing evidence that an errant Russian-made S-300 surface-to-air missile launched by Ukraine is responsible for the incident. Viewers may note that Ukraine has many Soviet-era hardware, including the S-300, which are being actively used in the conflict. Russia had launched a renewed offensive on Tuesday with about 100 missiles, and while details are unclear, the Ukrainian side launched the S-300 missile to intercept one of these Russian missiles. Images are widely circulating on social media showing a crater and an overturned farm tractor and trailer, as well as parts of a missile. Polish police and officials from the country's military reportedly arrived afterward to secure the scene. The specific circumstances remain murky, and officials from Ukraine and Russia continue to trade accusations about who might be at fault. While the Polish officials are still investigating the incident, the country's Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki and President Andrzej Duda both indicated that a Ukrainian surface-to-air missile fired in the course of the Russian missile strikes was likely what hit Shevadu. Morawiecki said in a press conference, Ukrainian forces, countering a massive Russian attack, launched their missiles yesterday to shoot down Russian missiles. There are many indications that one of those missiles fell on Polish territory without any intention on either side. President Duda said in separate remarks, we have no evidence at the moment that it was a rocket launched by Russian forces. However, there are many indications that it was a missile that was used by Ukraine's anti-missile defense. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg also told reporters in Brussels, Our preliminary analysis suggests that the incident was likely caused by a Ukrainian air defense missile fired to defend Ukrainian territory against Russian cruise missile attacks. U.S. President Joe Biden told G7 and NATO partners that the missile blast in eastern Poland was caused by a Ukrainian air defense missile, a NATO source told Reuters on Wednesday. Biden told reporters in Indonesia on Wednesday that the missile was unlikely to have been fired from Russia. A strike against Poland, a NATO member, could have risked a larger conflict if it turned out that Russia had launched the strike. The principle of collective defense is at the very heart of NATO's founding treaty. Article 5 provides that if a NATO ally is the victim of an armed attack, each and every other member of the alliance will consider this act of violence as an armed attack against all members and will take the actions it deems necessary to assist the ally attack. NATO invoked Article 5 for the first time in its history after the 9-11 terrorist attacks against the United States. Many unintended things can happen that can lead to a chain of unwanted consequences. On the 9th of March 2022, India accidentally fired a BrahMos missile which landed into Pakistan. 48 hours after the incident, the Indian Defense Ministry said, a technical malfunction led to the accidental firing of a missile and that it was deeply regrettable. While the incident in Poland didn't spiral out, 
there seems to be a lack of communication. U.S. Army General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said his staff tried to get Russia's top-ranking military official, General Valery Gerasimov, on the phone to discuss the incident with no success. This raises concerns about high-level U.S.-Russian communications in a crisis, and it needs attention. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.